body of Christ uh, into this into this space. Um, I'm so grateful again uh, for your presence. We've been doing a series of this uh, these uh, past few weeks called "Nice to Meet You" um, as an introduction into. Uh, ways in which we believe as a community of faith, um, uh, the particular ways that we express ourselves and contribute to the body of Christ here uh, in this church and, and, and in this place. And if you missed a week, uh, we put it on the podcast or you can find it on um, uh, YouTube as as well. Today, uh, we express ourselves, and if you can go to the next slide, slide uh, we use five words that I think in, in many ways overlap. Prayers, presence, gifts, witness, and service. And today, we're going to be talking about uh, the word witness. Um, the word witness for a lot of us carries a lot of baggage, meaning we have a, a history of understanding this word from whatever background uh, you might have um, come from. Uh, I'm often tempted uh, to choose new words as a new church, a new faith community. Let's just call it something else. Um, but I'm now kind of leaning into saying, no, uh, I, I want to reclaim what I feel like the, this word um, might, the fullness of this word might mean for us as a, uh, the body of Christ. Um, and, and we say this and we ask this in a question when someone joins the church uh, in a very long question, but we say, by your witness, uh, lean into the example of Christ by striving towards justice, mercy, and compassion for all of creation. And so today we're going to talk about what it means to lean into the example of Christ and how we experience God's divine love and how we might offer it to, to the world So the story that we're reading today uh, is actually, you, this probably is a favorite. I would put, put it within the favorites of, of gospel stories. Um, prior to this story, uh, Jesus uh, calms the storm. Uh, he says to the storm, peace be still, because uh, they are crossing, crossing the lake. Um, to get to the, they're going to the other side of the lake, and they encounter a storm, and, and the disciples are uh, or get really scared, and they see Jesus calm the storm by saying, peace be still to the storm. And uh, as they go to the other side, uh, a lot of the Gospels, and, and particularly Mark, there's like sandwiches. So you'll, there'll be like a, a Jesus encounters a storm, and then he crosses to the side, and he encounters a man that is like his life is a storm. Um, and so you'll see those kind of uh, foreshadowings all throughout um, um, Mark. Uh, this man that Jesus encounters, uh, he is unclean because he's living among tombs. Uh, he's living among uh, people that are dead. And his community had banished him to this place uh, because no one knew what to do with him. They didn't know what to do with him, and so they went and they binded him down uh, near these um, tombs. Just like we read a few weeks ago about the hemorrhaging woman. Uh, this man was out of options. Uh, we don't know what to do with you, so we're just going to put you over there and just hide you away. Uh, and, the, and the story says um, that he is, a lot of times when you see demon possession, uh, 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 mental illness. He, he struggled with a deep mental illness, and he suffered uh, from a debilitating madness, and so much so, even in the binding, it says in the story that they couldn't they couldn't contain him, and in that he was he was hurting himself, not just others, but he was hurting himself, and it says day and night. So this this guy is is um, living a torturous life, and as Jesus gets to the other side and he gets out of the boat, uh, this man runs out to Jesus. Um, and I'm captured by the words he says to Jesus. Uh, don't torture me. <laughs> don't hurt me. Please, don't hurt me. Um, how much this is an invitation to Jesus, please don't do what others have done to me. Uh, see me. Dignify me. Uh, for so many of us that have been harmed, hurt, traumatized, disappointed, maybe by religion 
or relationships or families uh, to all uh, various degrees uh, and paths, isn't this our simple ask? Please don't hurt me. <laughs> Please take my life with care uh, uh, and receive me. And Jesus does the opposite of, um, of, of um, torturing him. And I want to pause and, and into this is a, a rabbit hole into the sermon because I just think that, that it's such a, uh, uh, a good place to talk about uh, mental illness and someone struggling deeply with mental illness. And of course, in first century uh, Palestine, there was no like psychologist or psychiatrist to go see. Um, and the only way people dealt with people that had uh, mental disability uh, was to um, was to just cast them off, and really was the strategy, um, pretty much till now, right? I mean, just cast people off, put them in institutions and hospitals. Um, this is a side note to say that in our culture, and still, um, even in a progressive mindset, we still treat mental illness. As, as not a medical condition in our society. Um, and, and I talk with people all the time about uh, that um, my, my arm, I got this spot on my arm, and they're like, well, I went to the dermatologist last week. And then the side note is, is like, I'm just really struggling with depression these past two weeks. And have you gone to see somebody? Yeah, you know, it's not, it's like, so you, the spot on your arm that you think, and then there's still a stigma, even among progressive people, that we will put off our, our mental capacities, uh, and there's a health insurance divide within there, which I fully, I fully recognize, but I put within this rabbit hole in my sermon to encourage us to treat mental illness just like we would an ailment. <laughs> Um, that our life could only benefit. I was listening to someone this last week and, and that said, you know, you can try to treat yourself, but it will come out in harmful ways at some point. Um, so the invitation to, to us uh, in this rabbit hole is to, if you need care, uh, get care. And if you don't know how to get care, um, I am not here to play music at this church. I am here to help us live into the fullness and wholeness of who we are. And so it would be my absolute joy to walk with you and to help you find, find um, care in your life. Sermon over. Okay, great. That was, <laughs> that was the rabbit hole. Um, now let me find myself. So this man says to Jesus, don't torture me. And that's a simple ask. And Jesus does the opposite. And Jesus casts these demons to, out to the pigs the Jewish people deemed unclean. And there could be an argument that Mark is also talking about the Roman Empire uh, and casting out this demon in their society into the pigs. And Jesus sends these pigs rushing to the waters, which Jewish people believed uh, that you stayed away from the waters because waters uh, signified chaos and not calm. Um, and so Jesus took this man's chaos and he sent, sent it right to where it belonged. To his, he took away his uncleanliness and put it back in the pigs. And he sent those pigs into the chaos so that this man could have a, uh, a sense of, of calm. Uh, this was Jesus' way of saying, peace, be still. Word got back to the town about what had happened to this man. Uh, and they are not happy <laughs> that this man is in his right mind anymore. I mean, that he is now in his right mind. Instead, they are concerned about the economic impact of the pigs. And their invitation to Jesus was to please leave. Leave them because he has hurt uh, the economics of their community. And this man, uh, I, I understand. I understand as Jesus does leave, and in this city, only being able to see that not the the economic impact and not the human impact, um, wants to go with Jesus. 
And this is a part of the story that I, I'm, I'm captivated because he wants to follow Jesus. Uh, in, in a lot of places in Scripture, Jesus is like, come, come with me, follow me. But in this instance, Jesus says to him, go home to your friends and tell them how much the Lord has done for you, how he has had mercy on you. Like the Samaritan woman in that story, Jesus sends him back to the people to witness to the restoration that has occurred in his life. And this is where I want to reclaim this word witness. When I first became a, a Christian, I understood the word witness uh, meaning to evangelize to people, meaning I had tracks. Um, anybody ever had a track, found a track, seen a track? Uh, anybody not know what a track is? That would be great. No, everybody knows exactly what I'm talking about. Yeah. Okay, great. We're all, we're all in this together. Um, uh, and I was taught that you go to, to share the, the good news of Jesus through this um, gospel track. Um, and I was a new Christian. I didn't realize that a lot of people in those places actually didn't do that. But I'm like, I was a new, uh, new vulnerable soul. And so I was like, if that's what we're supposed to do, I'm going to go do it. And I, I made a lot of poor people feel very uncomfortable in Kmart. <laughs> <laughs> Have you thought about what clean, cleanses your soul as you look at your laundry detergent? <laughs> There's a lot of. Mo- Can I? Do you have a few minutes to spare? I, it looks like you have nowhere to be right now. Can I just share this with you? Um, and where you're trying to convince people, you know, that you're going to hell, and I, me, uh, have the information that you need that might save your life. But as I have grown older, and I've thought more and I and I reflect on stories like this um, I'm captured that witness wasn't so much about telling people and sharing a tract with them or sharing the what is called the plan of salvation but Jesus' invitation to this man was to share his story of how God had, had changed and shaped his life The word saved uh, in Greek means healness, heal, to be healed, to be made well. And when you read the Gospels, that's what it really means. Like somebody's life, was they were blind, and now they can see they were healed, they were saved, they were made whole. And so to witness is to share the story of the ways in which God is making us whole. Uh, John Wesley, the founder of Methodism, um, said, said this is that it's not a matter of when I was saved. Because I, I think a lot, of, a lot of traditions capture, like, when was it you were saved? When was that change in, in, in your life? Or when did you pray that prayer? But it was a matter of the question of how am I being saved in this moment? How am I being made well um, here and now? How am I being healed? How am I being restored? And when I think about this man who was demon-possessed, and, and when I think about the hemorrhaging woman, um, I think about how their, the debilitating illness that they struggled with and how they were restored and saved in that moment. And that Jesus sent them out to tell the story of how they are being restored and reconciled by God. Evangelism is another one of these words. I would probably say it was this week. I was like, you know what? I think I can, I can capture this word again. I can use it again. Um, because evangelism just has that, that taste, right? Right? Of, of uh, 
sharing, but if I can reclaim this wor- word, instead of thinking that of to convert people to my way of life or to my way of living or to my values, that I can reclaim it for what I think that it originally meant. Evangelism comes from the Greek word eugelion. I'm not a Greek scholar, and y'all are like, I already know that. Um, uh, which means the, the bringing of good tidings. Um, it was a deeply political, there's a lot of empire language that we use. Church is an empire word, uh, that, which means assembly, ecclesia. Um, this was a deep, politically rooted word, and Jesus took a lot of empire language and, and started to use it for a different, in a different way. In a way of the good news, what is the good news that we uh, evangelize? What is the good news uh, that, that God calls us to share? And it's this, that God's love has come into our neighborhood, incarnated in our story. And that we are all sent to proclaim and to evangelize, not to tell God's story, but to tell the way in which God has come into our own story. How God is transforming and healing our lives, restoring our lives. If we take our story out of witness, it's not witness. If we take our story out of evangelism, it's not evangelism. And so these two words really call us to to be impacted and to think, deeply about how God is reconciling and restoring in our story. As I said a few weeks ago, um, being a member of this community isn't so much about aligning theological beliefs and doctrines, but it's more about being sensitive to the ways in which God is living in our story or the ways in which we are experiencing compassion And how we might share the goodness of God in all the places we find ourselves. How we might experience God's delivering us from what has held us in bondage and freeing us to be the kind of healing community others have prayed for and long for. I oftentimes tell people that I I don't, not so much. desire people to invite people into this congregation but I do invite us to share the ways in which this congregation and community is impacting our lives and to let that people decide if that's something they want to be a part of so I want to ask I want to ask us today how is God saving you how's God saving you in this moment I want to invite us to if you have a story or a word how is God saving you